Can you imagine an orphanage that's a happy place? We couldn't, but then we found one. The kids don't arrive here smiling, like orphans all over the world. They've been abandoned, they're hungry, sad, and desperate. But after a few years, they're healthy, well-fed, and, well, happy. The orphanage is in Kenya, outside Nairobi, and we might as well tell you now, it's an orphanage for elephants. They've been orphaned because their parents, their mothers mainly, have died, or more likely been killed in the bush. Poachers kill large elephants for their ivory. A young elephant can only survive a day or two without milk, so the orphanage's first job is to find the orphans, fly them to the orphanage, and before anything else, feed them. The principal of the orphanage, the principal, headmistress, head nurse, and CEO, is Dame Daphne Sheldrick. She founded the place, has been working with elephants for 50 years. This is little Sagutu. This is the one that was in a coma oh, right. when she arrived. was on a drip for, for um, 24 hours. We mm -hmm. never thought she'd see, be alive in the morning. So she's our little miracle, this one. But Daphne's problem is that she's caring for too many miracles. Poachers are killing more and more elephants for their tusks, creating more and more orphans. There's a record number of orphans here right now because, Daphne says, the sale of ivory has been legalized for the first time in 10 years. A few African countries have been given the right to sell their ivory stockpiles, more than 100 tons of tusks, to China and Japan. And conservationists point out this is yet another blow to Africa's elephants. Do you see any correlation between the decision to auction off the ivory and the number of orphans? We do. Every time ivory is auctioned legally, there's a, a rise in poaching. And we also see the correlation in, in the price that's paid to the poacher for illegal ivory. Is the price going up? It's gone from 300 shillings a kilo to 5,000. That's about $1,000 a tusk. And in Kenya, the number of elephants killed by poachers has increased by 45% this year alone. A rather amazing rise, isn't it? It is. It's, it's a scary, frightening rise. Poachers were behind the death of this elephant. Her trunk was caught in one of their snares, and she had no way of feeding herself or her six-week-old baby boy. He just couldn't accept the fact that his mother was dead, so he continued trying to suckle. Eventually, the keepers got him to drink their milk. They called him Shimba, and he was in such bad shape that nobody thought he would survive. But then he was brought to the orphanage, and things began going his way. He's 27 months old now, and is in very good shape. Very muscular, very strong, and he's beginning to grow tusks. He never stops eating. In fact, that's the first love of every orphan here, eating. The institution has a dining area, and that's not all. As we found out when we first dropped by here three years ago, it has everything you'd want in an orphanage. Dormitories, each orphan has a private room, a communal bath, and a playground. The regimen at the orphanage is anything but Dickensian. Unlike Oliver Twist, when one of these orphans asks for more, that's what he gets, more. Ultimately, Daphne finds elephants more sympathetic than people. What is the most extraordinary thing you have learned about elephants? Their tremendous capacity for caring is, I think, perhaps the most amazing thing about them, even at a very, very young age. Their sort of forgiveness, unselfishness. So, you know, I, I often say, as I think I've said before, they have all the, the best attributes of us humans and not very many of the bad. Just about the best people you've ever met are the gentlemen who work here. Keepers, they're called, and they have extraordinary jobs. There is one keeper per elephant. He'll spend 24 hours a day with his charge, seven days a week. A keeper feeds his elephant every three hours, day and night, just like mom would. He keeps his elephant warm, not like mom would, but with a blanket. And when it's sleep time, he beds down right next to his elephant. If he leaves, if ever so briefly, the baby wakes up and broadcasts his displeasure. The keepers are rotated now and then so that no elephant gets too terribly attached to any one of them. At dawn, the elephants are taken from their dorms out to the bush. They hang out for a while, play some games. Soccer is a favorite. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And guess who decides when it's halftime? <laughs> the days are pretty much the same here, but on Fridays, the orphanage becomes a spa. You want to rubber down? Go on, rubber down. The keepers give the elephants a coconut oil massage. We can't do exactly what the mother can do, but we do something close to that. You're a surrogate mother. You're yes, yes. Edwin Lucici is the head of the keepers. He is the chief elephant man. This one here is Luwaleni. Luwaleni is the, the oldest female we have, 16 months as well. The tiny one here is uh, Makena. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, always want to be close with Luwaleni. Yes, well, they always want to be close to each other and to you, don't they? Um, I'm afraid this interview with Edmund is getting rudely interrupted. Yes. But there's really not that much to do. They may be little, they may be orphans, but trust me, yeah. they're not as little as they look. In fact, I feel like I'm in an elephant sandwich. Yes, you are. <laughs> Perhaps the problem was we had not been properly introduced. There is a protocol to meeting an elephant. He will offer up his trunk and he expects you to blow in it. That way, he will remember your scent forever. You will never be strangers again. The, the little baby's been captured. The orphanage gets distress calls from all over Kenya, from all over East Africa, that a baby elephant is on his own, often because his mother has been killed by a poacher. It is then a matter of great urgency. An orphaned elephant can only survive a few days without his mother. The baby elephant is loaded onto a plane and flown back to Daphne Sheldrick's orphanage outside Nairobi, where he'll stay until he's strong enough to go back into the bush. Dame Daphne has been running the orphanage for almost 30 years. She was born and raised in Kenya and married David Sheldrick, Africa's leading crusader against poaching. When he died in 1977, she founded the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. Daphne saw her mission as saving as many elephants as possible, but she has never permitted herself too much hope. That's because she loses half the elephants that arrive here, some from pneumonia, some from trauma. This elephant probably witnessed its mother's death and remembers everything. That's the double-edged sword of having the memory of an elephant. They never forget. Um, you know, he's still grieving for his elephant family, he's in shock, he's distressed. Do you believe a baby elephant can die of grief? Oh yes, I know it can. They're terribly, terribly fragile. You've got mm. to try and turn the psyche around. Duplicating what that elephant would have had in an elephant family, touching them, talking to him gently. In other words, love. Tender loving care, TLC mm. and a lot of it. Mm. Daphne and the keepers may run this place officially, but it's the elephants who are really in charge. For example, when a new keeper is hired, he's on probation for three months. Then, if the elephants like him, he's got a job. If not, he's out. What do you try to teach them? Well, we have to teach them not to be naughty, not to push around with the others, mm -hmm. uh, to obey one another, just like you have to do to your children, your own children, mm -hmm. uh, to respect the others. Mm -hmm. And the keepers teach the elephants how to be elephants. There are wild elephant things these kids don't know how to do. Mother wasn't around to teach them. Things like covering themselves in dust to prevent sunburn. The keepers do it with shovels until the elephants pick it up themselves. The orphanage has an infirmary and the doctor has a call to make. One of the elephants is not doing well at all. He's been on antibiotics for two days now, but he can barely breathe. All this froth that's coming out of his trunk has got to be pulmonary edema. His room looks like an intensive care unit. The doctor, Daphne, and the keepers don't leave him for a minute. They do everything they can, but it's not enough. By dawn, he is dead. How do you manage going through this all the time? Well, you don't have much option, do you? There's another one to look after, and then another one coming, and you know, you just have to turn the page. And you get attached but to I'm one. But I'm not very good at it. And you're not going to get any better, are you? No. 
not after 50 years. But then you go and you hang out with the, the orphans who are doing so well and it brings joy to your life. Absolutely. It's actually a pretty lush life for these elephants here at the orphanage, but it's not the life of a wild elephant. It's not their destiny. So like any good school, this place prepares its students to leave, to get ready for life in the real world, to go back to the wild from whence they came. This young lady left Daphne's orphanage to go live in the wild. Her name is Mpenzi, and a couple of years ago, she became pregnant and decided to go off on her own to give birth without the protection of her extended family. That was a mistake. Before the sun could set, Mpenzi and her baby were surrounded by a pride of 16 lions. Keeper Joseph Sonny was called to the scene and captured the events on his still camera. So Mpenzi was standing there trying to, to scare off lions with a trunk. Yeah. But when they came, she tried to push them on this side, others come at the back. Mpenzi didn't have a chance. Yeah. How did you and the other keepers react? Uh, it was so, so sad. In fact, uh, everybody was crying. And there was nothing they could do to save the baby. It was a brutal lesson for Mpenzi. Nature has its own laws. They're a long way from the sheltered world of the orphanage. But this story has a happy ending. Just days before we arrived, and Penzi gave birth to another little girl. The keepers have all come out to cheer her on. They named her Asante, which in Swahili means thank you. And Penzi has learned her lesson. This time she makes sure her bundle of joy is surrounded by other members of the family. They help her up when she falls down and rescue her when she tumbles into a mud hole. So for the moment, Asante will be safe, at least until she grows tusks.